Welcome to Jam, where we talk about stuff and things every week. We'll use harsh language and talk about things that may not be comfortable. We may chase a rabbit hole for a bit, but we'll come back around. Are you ready to jam? <clears throat> Alright, so I seen an article today that was talking about celebrities that are vowing to leave the country if Trump is reelected and it's it's funny that the rich and famous are threatening to leave the the US over this, I guess, since the first time Trump was elected in 2016. Has anyone actually left? Tommy Lee, I think, left. Did they actually leave? I think he leave? actually left because I think I saw it. I think they're on, all coming saw, back. Right. Well, why they're coming you, back. Why you say that? He just said he was going to leave again if he's reelected. If he was, yes, because I saw that. So on, I, yes. I wonder if he actually left or not. But it, it, it's completely ego-driven statement. Like, the rich and the famous are so full of themselves that they think that they're very important and self-centered and what they say is going to influence someone on how they vote and whatnot. But that's what they play into, right? If you like me, you're going to vote the way I want to vote. Why do you become a celebrity? Right. You, you've you need a lot of validation i think for the most part a lot of celebrities it's they they do become famous because or want to become famous because they need the validation i am good at, at what i do right I no i can this. see that i guess i guess my whole main point to bring this up is that i think that they're just going to run away right they're not going to stay and fight the fight, right, to actually make a change. Why should they? They're they just going to take off the hide. They don't need to. They already have what they want. Yeah, right. They they're going to say they're what good. they want and piss off regular people and then a year into it be yelling at, the, at regular people saying, why aren't you fighting the battle? Why aren't you complaining about this? Why aren't you fighting this right. issue? So why are you letting check. this happen? Yeah. Tommy Lee never left, and this is the first election he's made the statement. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. Nice. Yes. And then Bruce Springsteen has made it. This one, at least, I know he was going to take off if well, Trump was reelected. Well, in 2016, so. like, um, yeah, no, lots of them, right? Yeah, wasn't uh, enough people said it for it to be who's that a punk? big thing? Oh, Green Day. Yeah. Green Day was going to go back to Green- Canada. I- but, but how many other elections did people say, celebrities say, I mean, I'm going to leave if Obama should, gets elected, Bush gets elected. I, th- yeah. I, I want to I want to know if there were celebrities that said that when Obama got elected. I think that I mean, they were immediately dragged for being giant racist bastards. So Right, but <laughs> and it would and it, yeah, and it wouldn't matter yeah. if they actually were or not, but I don't know, from a com- community point of view, a bunch of people that were adamantly racist that were like if this black man gets in office I'm gonna leave and they're still fucking here and I really wish they would have just actually right. left <laughs> no okay yeah I'll give you that that <laughs> makes perfect sense but all the racists leave when the black guy gets president <laughs> it would be funny that would be so <laughs> convenient where are they gonna go Germany oh god oh, they no, would no, go no, to jail no, no. so quickly Let's, don't throw Germany under the no, bus they learn no, their I lesson mean, and they don't where, do that like that's but that's what you're 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 they would find whatever part of white they were originally from and say like I'm gonna go back to Ireland or Scotland not knowing well, a damn right, thing about have, the area I mean, the biggest, <laughs> right, yeah. the, what's the biggest thing now uh um, Nazis, right? So right. Be considered Nazi if you would have left the country if a black man got president. N- not necessarily. And went, not a Nazi, but a white supremacist. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. He's, white, he's supremacist. white supremacist. Yeah. Although you'd have to be white to classify that, and I, 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 it'd be a fun research topic to look at, see all of the ethnical backgrounds that were against Obama or all the ethnical backgrounds that are against Trump or right. Bush or Clinton before that one so I you know they 
the news or whoever, politicians, whatever, like to lump people together. Oh, all these, the African-American race is voting for us. And and that's just not the case. There's a lot of African-Americans voting for Trump. Hispanics, the same way. There's a lot of Hispanics voting for Trump when Democrats are saying, oh, no, they're all voting for us. Like, you know. Right. It's a hot take right now because uh, I think there's there's a giant thing about uh, black conservatives in in our socio-politics right now and me personally I have never had a problem with black conservatives black republicans don't bother me right now it's it's Trump it's Trump for me it's not it has nothing to do with the Republican party or conservative party it is this one man in particular that I loathe (laughs) Well, and then to clarify that is is mainly is his talking points and when he opens his mouth that you really have the problem with, right? When other people write his speeches and things, he's fine. It's when he goes on his own little tangent. Like, I'm sure I'm sure other presidents have had their biases. I'm sure they have said some also fucked up shit. This man has said things that have sparked hate within the hearts of a lot of people and made other people realize where they stand to the President of the United States. Right. No, I, I, I get it. I mean, you can look back at almost any politician in their history and see some kind of misspeak where they look like a bunch of jackasses. Do you think he feels like he needs to do that because it's it really is... Almost every Democrat and some Republicans on his case all the time. He feels like he has to be aggressive and... uh, Well, while I agree, I think that being aggressive and being... uh, Firm or you whatever you want to call it, assertive. assertive. Yeah. Without the language behind it, that kind of makes you question. You know, what are you really trying I mean, to say uh, there? Tr- tr- <sighs> I don't have the research to prove it, but Trump is absolutely a white supremacist, and that's. <sighs> Well, and that goes back to how many times has he had to denounce white supremacy? He's done it once. No, I have. I mean, I've actually seen the video that a, um, I won't say the name of the person who, who did the video, but he did take footage clips from every time he said it. And he said it multiple times. I just, when you're asked in, like, the most recent debate to just denounce white supremacy, to just denounce the one thing that's just white supremacy, and instead of just saying white supremacy is bad, you flip the script and are like, proud boys, let's call them proud boys. What do you want to call them? Do you want to call them, let's let's call them proud boys. Instead of just using the term white supremacists are bad, that's where you lose me. (laughs) Well, right, I I get what you're saying. Um, And... You know, he should have denounced it right then and there. I know he came out later and after the fact and denounced it and did so on Twitter. Well, how many times, if you're asked the same question over and over and over and over, like how many ways do I have to say you learn how to answer? You just say white supremacists are bad. And then whenever you do denounce it, the person doing the interview say, "Oh, so you're not going to denounce it, even though you just did denounce it." Right. No, and I get that point too. Right. He's he has denounced it right he didn't do it the right. first and time like he should have this was before he denounced it before the the first presidential debate right no i get that too and then like the the latest town hall with with Samantha Gunthery or whatever her name is and she was just completely not listening to any of his answers and just blowing him up um i think that you know it it should be taken um however the viewpoints of the reporter or the person that's doing it too um when they hear him having denounced white supremacy or whatever not doing it the first time like he should have but after the fact but the comp- I, I get where the frustration would be you don't believe him because he's just being compliant at that point well right there is some of that too but then i wonder you know they continually ask him and ask him and ask him and 
just putting myself in in his shoes, I guess, not over the white supremacy thing, because I think I would denounce it every time, but I could see the frustration, I guess, of continually being ragged about this point, and it's like, let's move on to other things that are more necessary to talk about, like all the shit that the American people are going through right now. I mean, all the shit that American people are going to involves racism right now, though. No, 100% I agree. Right, but how long did it take the Democrats to say, okay, Antifa is just too too much. We don't condone the the rioting. We don't condone the burning uh, buildings and the, the shooting of people. I mean, I don't have any facts behind that, but Antifa is a more recent thing that wouldn't have started happening if not for, like, the racist bullshit that's been bubbling at the surface. No, I think Antifa was back during Obama's... Antifa just, I mean, anti-fascist. So, I mean, say they get violent and aggressive, I'm hoping they're going in with the will to punch Nazis because if you legitimately think that your race is superior to another so much so that you're willing to fucking hold a rally like what happened in Charleston, you you deserve to get punched. <laughs> I'm not saying you don't. And but I think at if- what point do you say, okay, this is, I'm fighting the cause here to burning down a building or... Right, of course. Well, no, there's going to be extremists on both sides, and I think the the points get lost because either you're super so far right, you just look ridiculous, or you're so super far left, you look ridiculous, and the majority of the people that are in between the two get washed away by that simple fact. And even then, regardless of being left or right, there are people out there that have no political alignment that are looking for any reason to go out and be able to cause chaos and start shit. Oh, yeah. (laughs) There There are. Just to quote the Batman movie, there are some people that just want to watch the world burn. And there are serial killers. They're they're just there to do it. They get a thrill from just killing someone. Same with the people who want to burn the country. They don't have any respect for the country. They don't care about the country. They don't care about the people. Right. I mean, I can see that. And I think that a lot of things, I guess, would be better if Trump was... (laughs) <laughs> horrible word if he was muzzled a little bit he should stay off Twitter but I think any president should stay off of Twitter no, right. no president I should mean, be on Twitter but I don't know it's just the amount of hatred that he is personally himself just wrangled in it's it's horrifying to see just the lack of empathy and that that person's our president right now I don't care how great he is in business there are real people here well right but in they've they've presented a stimulus package three times now and the Democrats, Pelosi, has said no every time. Because she wants right. exactly what she's asking for. She doesn't care about the starving, unemployed, middle class, working class people that are struggling, the poor that is struggling. She cares about getting what she wants. Right. That's the only thing she cares about. I mean, and you have Dim saying, no, sign it. We'll deal with it later. Just sign it. There's people that need it. And she's yeah. still, no, no, no. Well, I mean, it just proves that you don't have to. It's not the party that makes a person bad, which is why I don't think I don't blame. I don't blame Republicans for Trump. I blame Trump for Trump. <laughs> right. And that's the that's the main thing. I think that it's it's Trump. And then it's it's like it's like the police. Right. It's one, uh, not one, but bad apples make the whole thing look bad, right? Well, that's in any place of business. No, absolutely. and that's, I mean, if ten bad apples see one bad apple do something awful and then they don't say anything about it. <laughs> then you have eleven bad apples. Well, no, But that's 100%. the same in work. If you see someone 
sexually harassing or assaulting someone and you don't say anything, you're just as guilty. You're just as guilty because you didn't say anything or try to stop it. And that's why I try to bite my tongue when it comes to the cop thing because there are absolutely people that join the force wanting to do good. And then there are people that leave or get fired because they wanted to do good and saw awful shit. And then there's the people that stay quiet so they can keep their job. And, you know, I can't blame someone for needing to make a living for their family, but what that force does, it does to other people, too. Sure, but you could take that that statement right there. Stay quiet just to keep the job and put that on the politicians. That what happens everywhere. That just play to the party's background in order to get the votes to stay in office while they actually don't do a damn thing for the country. Right. I mean, yeah. And then we're so blinded to that that we're just gonna vote all blue or all red and it doesn't matter what they do or anything like that. So Well right. And that but and it also takes you back to I think politicians bank on celebrities to kind of endorse bring, them. Right. If you endorse me, then whoever supports you, likes you, likes your movies, are obsessed with you, whatever, you're going to bring them over and we're going to get their votes too. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Biden had some artists playing a music thing for them. The Beach Boys did a thing for Trump and everybody's blowing up about how bad the Beach Boys are because they're playing this thing for Trump. But the people who, the, the group that back supported uh, gave their music to Biden, they're not bad. You don't hear the Republicans going, oh my god you're so bad, why do you support this candidate? No, you only hear the left saying that. I mean, I, I hear the right saying it, too, though, but that's because I my, my background in my media is more left anyways, so. Which goes to prove exactly how the media works. Oh, absolutely. It's it's built to curve your view one way or another. Oh, yeah. They keep... play to one side for sure. I have Republican friends, and they share a lot of Republican stuff. Doesn't bother me. If it does bother me, I just scroll past it. Right. Because I'm not going to say, oh, I'm going to unfriend you because you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. Yeah, see, it's never been that way for me. But, like, everyone that I've known in my life personally that's been a Republican and it, the issues that come up, it it stops being about their political stance and starts being more about, you just said something racist and now you want to apologize for it. That's homophobic or that's transphobic or you really need to actually, like see what you are doing to other people when you decide to go pro-life over pro-choice and you we can disagree on opinions we can't disagree on other human lives you know (laughs) right no yes i i agree i mean there's just some things you can't like a person's right to exist isn't an opinion (laughs) Well, right, but but that's what the pro-lifers go say is that baby's right to exist isn't an opinion. It has a right to exist. That's their argument. Their too. argument is that it's more than the mother's, though. I I personally am against abortion. I'm not going to tell someone. They can't have an abortion. Yes, no, and that's... That's that's, not my business. That's where the pro-lifers lose me, because it's, uh... I mean, I don't necessarily believe in abortion either, but I believe in practicing safe sex and not creating something that you don't want to bring into the world. Exactly, but then that also brings in the... Why doesn't the government back adoptions why is adoption so freaking expensive but i've also seen something recently that really got me shook that i realized was very very accurate bringing up adoption in the case of uh whether or not we should allow abortions just sees the individual as like a living incubator for nine months someone having to carry this child so it can be adopted later, well, which isn't I, fair to them. Well, I'm not saying that. But the people that get pregnant that don't want to do an abortion, that right. do carry the term to place for adoption... Um, 
but that, that still leaves room open for individual choice and not just exactly. you cannot have exactly. it regardless of anything ever period right which is not <laughs> which brings me the like being against abortion is just my personal opinion and choice for my own reasons and what I've been through personally. But, you know, what's you, what fucking you've hilarious been through about personally that? isn't, you know, that's not up to me. Yeah, what's hilarious about that is that makes you pro choice. <laughs> I, right, but I, like I said, I'm not gonna say I'm not, I'm pro choice or pro life. Right. I am against personally abortions because of just the things that I go through, yeah. I've been through. But that just because I've been through things doesn't mean that they have to share this your experience. Yeah. your experience or anyone else's experience For if sure. they've had to go through it. And because I mean I know people that probably would have been better off if they had gotten abortions. Yeah, I've I've know I've known a lot. I know of, people um, who got would have been better off if they had been taught. You know, okay, yes, you want to go have sex. Here is how you do it safely and responsibly instead of, no, no, abstinence. Well, I know quite a few people that had abortions because it wasn't the right time and they never wanted to. They just didn't fucking know any better and... Stupidity. What can you do? Man, that got real deep real fast. Anyways, (laughs) back on the subject (laughs) of celebrity endorsed moving. But yeah, but like, but... I mean, but just like with pol- politics, like a celebrity gives their opinion, say on pro choice, they expect you, okay, it's because I think and feel this way, you, you need to. You have to be, yeah. Well, because they got money and they're the experts of the world. Exactly. Don't you know that? Which brings me All back right. to my point, and my issue is what, and I know it's egotism, but what in your right mind think makes you think that you live on the same scale as a working class person having to go through the struggle having to go through this right people that are making minimum wage making less than a hundred thousand dollars a year part time jobs you can say minimum wage but if you're not getting 40 hours a week you're still making a whole lot less than just a regular full time scraping by paycheck to paycheck you know minimum wage but I don't like Trump because he's racist are the celebrities that were listed because I don't know who either of these fucking people are that saying are they going to move are they black no no so, as someone who doesn't like Trump because he's racist, them moving because of a racist, just, I don't know, it, you're not helping anything and you're not speaking for the people that he's actively hurting. Which is what his point is. Right. How are you not, Why, if it bothers you so much, why leave? Why not stay and help lead and, you know. Right. Like and Ice Cube. He brought, um... I forgot what it was called, um, but it's basically to help advance the African American race. You know, um, an organization to help the community. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, he I took it to, to both parties. Yeah, the right. Democrats said wait until after the election. Trump's administration said okay and sat down, and they actually changed uh, some some stuff around and got some things done Mm. and he acknowledged that and he you know said you know just thank you for listening and making this situation better right and there he's had a lot of people come out and just blast him because he was like you know praising the Trump administration. Well, the part of me that's skeptical is the part of me that is wondering how much of it did they do for him just to keep him quiet? Like, how much of it was to just keep the black community docile? I don't docile. think they did. I think they actually did because they want to get, to get somewhere with it. They're trying to get somewhere to where, you know, yes, we know this is an issue. We're trying to help us figure this out because Kim Kardashian with the... Um, taking because she's doing a lot where she goes and helps innocent prisoners african-american prisoners get out right and she's actually helped i know at least one 
but I think she's helped a few and she's gone to the White House and she's spoken to them and she's she's actually done her homework on it and she's gotten people out. That's good. And she's worked with the administration to do that and they are jumping on her because she's working with them calling her a traitor because she's working with them. I would have to know more about both situations. I don't know. Some, something in me is skeptical. Look yeah. That up. I'll make an appointment for it later. So but yeah. See um, where I can find and what is happening. But, um, I just. If. If someone's going to come up with, hey, here's a problem and here's you know, how. What I think can fix it, let me bring it to you and you help fix it and right. then get someone with it and make progress and help a race and then to have other people which probably mostly aren't even your race come at you and just blow you up oh yeah no the um, that's white savior thing right. is very very real and happens a lot in black communities someone will be of the privileged majority and try to tell them how they should feel which is not is not okay I mean even as someone who is half black I wouldn't go to another black person and try to tell them what their experience is that's right. fucked and I love you to death and I would do anything for you but I'm not going to stand in front of someone and tell someone how you've personally been attacked. Yeah. Because like, that's... A, I don't know. Yeah. And B, that's not my place. It's your place, just as an individual, to tell your story. Yeah, there's, right. there's, a, there's a line that you teeter when you... Uh, want to you want to if you're white and you want to make sure that minority groups are um being heard you have to play a fun game of making sure you are you're a conduit and not the voice exactly yeah. exactly right and on the ice cube thing he contacted the biden campaign along and with the trump campaign and what he got from the biden campaign was well we're not going to do anything right now but if we win, then we'll talk and actually do something. Oh. So, I mean, I guess okay. Well, and then he's be he's being called a traitor. Yeah. Ice Cube. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a lot of backlash on him, but he's he's come out and he's done some other things, and we'll do some research on it and talk about it. But it seems like that. Uh, he tried both sides, and one side took him up on it, and one side did not. Well, what's he supposed to do? Say, um, no, thank you, I'm going to wait? Right. No, these are issues that need to be dealt with. They need to be addressed. Right. So, cool. But, anyways, back to rich politicians telling us how we should live and vote and all that kind of stuff. I, I'm upset because I would like I would like the privilege to just be able to have enough money to up and leave whenever I didn't like something happening in my country. Yeah, right? Right. me too. Well, I mean, <laughs> if I feel like I am being stressed out, I would just like to jet set away. Yeah. I and mean, that would be great. Like, I, I would like to be able to not have to worry about the fact that I am queer and colored in okay. a scary situation but I, I can't I can't not worry about that I don't have any of the resources just up and leave because I feel like it right and <laughs> being queer and in the LGBTQ community because you are out an outspoken advocate of it for sure um, and there's there's even a lot of celebrities that weigh in on that and give their opinion about that like it should care. Like it should matter oh, what fuck. they personally think. They talk about how J.K. Rowling queer baited everyone with Dumbledore is gay and then with her turfy, radical, trans-exclusive, feminist bullshit decided to say that trans women are not women and continue down the rabbit hole because evidently the entire experience of woman is the fact if you have a vagina or not. Okay, so my question is <laughs> on this is going on her, her viewpoint of um, trans women are not real women. So is she basically saying that um, men can't be raped or sexually harassed or anything like that I mean, as probably. well? probably. I mean, because that, to me, that's what it sounds it's like. It's in the same area of bullshittery. Exactly. 
this, those, those, those c- terse would absolutely think that men can't be raped and also that trans women aren't women. That's, yeah, those two things fall hand in hand for a lot of them. Well, I will say this. I think that's just utter bullshit. She's never said anything like that because, holy fuck, if she does, there's going to be more, so... Well, yes, because then you wouldn't have the LGBTQ community coming at you. You would have the male. You now you have the actual sexual assault victims, but yeah, no, yes. nothing like that. It's just, there are so many LGBT kids that this person managed to create a wonderful world for, and like, it was almost like they were almost her target audience. They were her target audience. And then, audience. yeah. And well, then kids to come out with this. specifically were her audience. Does she not It's supposed think to be acceptance for everyone, you know? Kids exist? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I don't <sighs> The same line of thinking makes it look like my experience is a woman experience, and that's not the case. <laughs> well, you, and this is just with trans women, too, you have the... Unfortunate pleasure of experiencing both. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what I was fixing to say. You do. Because you, I mean, it's not like... You can't say that you weren't I was at absolutely one point treated a female like because a woman. You, yeah. you were, and then you decided you. That's when you decided I, I'm not this, and you decided to change. Yeah. Um. It's just it. You can't ignore that part of yourself. Right. And so you do have the uniqueness of experiencing both an unfortunate... Yeah, an unfortunate experience. I don't know. Trans trans women get the shitter a lot, and it's because as someone as myself is... I am, I'm allowed to be... I'm allowed to have a vagina and be masculine. Right. You are, for whatever reason, in the society not allowed to have a penis and be feminine. No, I agree with that because... I I see the looks sometimes that Jason gets when because he he is a cis male he is very he's a male I mean he's not flamboyant or anything but you do have your moments where you do get excited yeah and it shows and you right. don't hold it back right and then I have a cousin who is a very flamboyant and isn't afraid of it and he absolutely gets judged on the daily yeah. because of it. And it just breaks my heart because it's like, okay, at what point, like a lot of people preach these anti-bully and sh- love, not hate stuff. And then, but they're the ones going out and bullying these people. Right. I mean, it's, right. That's, it's the... And that's what they are. People. It's not that they're gay or they're trans or they're lesbians. I mean, I once they're people. watched a documentary on 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 racist folk who said no there's nothing wrong with the black babies because they're just babies and i think that moment really highlighted how fucking ignorant a lot of people are because they legitimately do forget that adults were once children <laughs> it's kind of like that line in matilda where the principal trunchbull says I hate children. Glad I never was one. God. <laughs> it absolutely is because God. you do. And I don't know how people forget. Me, I think about it all the time. I prefer to go back to being a kid where I didn't have responsibilities and I could paint all day. Like, really. But it's just, it's like you hit 21 or even 18 and for some 16 and 15 you hit where you have to be responsible and you have to stop doing that and that you shouldn't have to stop being in a sense childish right i mean for a lot of people they were raised to think that they have to stop and the people that don't want to are just for the most part in the way that we have everything set up miserable because they want to be able to you know feed themselves and also follow whatever creative endeavor they have right and a lot of people don't have the energy to do both. <laughs> yeah. Are some of your favorite Halloween movies or murder mysteries or maybe even serial killers? 
and why. That's very important. Don't just give us names so we have to guess why. <laughs> and it's not weird if you have a favorite serial killer because I watch serial killer shows all the time and there's a lot of people that do. Murder mysteries are interesting. They're cool. I mean, people are fucking crazy. <laughs> it does get very interesting on some of them. Let's you know that anyone is capable of doing awful, awful things. So the good ones are the ones that choose to not do those awful, awful things. 